Hello, friends, and welcome back once again to Gary Grigsby's War East. We'll uh, continue with this here. I did uh, say I want to attack this uh, this division. Let's go. That is actually really bad for me because that does not help me at all. <clears throat> Might just as well have not attacked. <laughs> and that. Um, they did not route, unfortunately. But let's see. <laughs> Using just those other guys might not be enough. So I feel like uh, using the tanks there might also be needed. Of course, the uh, goal and a ten, huh? Is Okay, well, the uh, my hope was that maybe at least I'd be able to push through a little bit better, but that that really did not uh, go very well. Let's move back from here because it's no use sticking to that. Okay, um, let's at least take that one hex. And here. Uh, okay, well. I guess. At the uh, very least, I would need to position my units in such a way that it's unlikely they'll be able to, to get through there. confident about that let's uh, let's split you up I know that's a bit weird but I really feel like I uh I don't want to get caught with my pants down And this is probably the way to do it. I know this encirclement is not great at the moment, but uh, I don't feel very confident in trying to do any better. Lose a few more tanks? No. Alright, that's unfortunate. You're not 
gonna win that probably so I'll just leave leave them there um This is unlikely to succeed, but I might be able to get a potentially a, some sort of mini encirclement going. Who knows? And move you in here. Start moving these to get the last few hexes. All right. So I have. Let's see whether you take that hex or you don't. So let's keep your own refit in there. Now. I want to have a, a quite a sizable force actually move up without taking well actually I want all of my uh, all of this army to move up as much as possible you would be at 25 you also but 13th answer is somewhat weaker so I'm gonna have to take a look what's here this okay let's get the motorized core to move up which is part of you That's fine. These are fairly weak. So need to be them. Why not around them as well? There's no loss in doing such a thing. Now, let's see, because I can move these as well somewhat further. You cannot move into Kharkov proper. So I would need a Panzer Vision. Best is probably going to be 11th, since they are the weakest. So now that we've punched a hole in there again for the second time, is <laughs> if Belgorod is empty, let's see. Oh, yes. Hello. Going into Belgorod. Right, so I'm still looking to close this gap between Kursk and, well, between Belgorod and Bryansk now, if they don't uh, cut me off, which is, again, super likely, but they didn't loot last time, so who knows. Um, as I mentioned before, this is in, in terms of uh, riskiness, I would say this is extreme risk so don't do this at home kids where are you gonna go where are you gonna go if I move them up they're gonna have a chance to move in there I'm quite sure that these two hexes will well let's let's move them here so let, let's just commit to having first panzer group move towards this side except those armored units around here i still have two motorized and these and then also these guys there's i mean there there's a reason why i um 
decided to put those additional panzers in the south. It's because they just have more objectives than any other um, of the panzer groups. And in this case, it is working out rather well, at least in the sense that you know, these guys are not going to have the greatest of supplies. There's no real line that's going to be able to give it to them. Uh, of course, I'm in a pretty bad spot in terms of re real commitment as well, but... Uh, Okay, so I will have you go in here. Obviously in super bad shape. But then this is zero. Go to zero, huh? Okay, so let's at the very least you here. Um, the thing is, is that basically getting Kharkov and Belgorod basically digging digging in along the donuts is um, that's pretty much the plan. So, you know, typical German 1941, trying to dig in, along, dig in along the donuts, totally fine. If we look at the historical capture dates, we can see that the Germans but extended a small amount beyond that. Like they captured Volchansk on the other side and they captured Balakleya. So basically they had some, some line here that they captured. Soviets actually took this back full chance not this um, but either way that's that's pretty much all they got on this side and um, that's why digging in along the donuts in itself is uh, just you know straight up German 1941 nothing wrong with that especially as we're trying to move towards Kirsten now the AI seems to be at a, at a loss as to how to handle units so far into their rear um, they're they're trying to form some line again here as well. Uh, I mean that that's probably pretty reasonable there, but uh, it seems they they find it challenging. Uh, that's just kind of how it looks like right now. I'm quite happy for that. I mean, I, I did actually lose lose a uh, rail construction unit that will sick, make my life significantly more difficult. In all honesty. All right, Romanian rail units. The um, way I suppose this is gonna work is I'm just gonna try and shuffle these Romanians to the east. move you there your motorized unit can move a, a lot faster um, and thus might be of more use faster as well let's get those Italians going uh, two over in this direction Uh, let's keep all of these guys close to the coast. 
as well. I'll actually probably have to put some garrison uh, in the ports. So Odessa, Ochakov, you know, all of these probably will need it. Are you already isolated? Yes, you are. Okay, good, good, good. Mm, they, uh, they probably need that. Either way. There are some HQs. I need to do a, a bit of an uh, HQ swap for some some units. And that's totally fine. So you need to go under the 51st. There we are. That seems to just uh, work out a lot better already. Now. There is a, a bit of a mess here too. Let's put you under the 50 second. Good. Uh, this motorized score is the only unit in the... No, it's the second unit. Okay, so you need to be put under the 14th motorized as well. They can handle it and... Ah, okay, I messed it up. I should have put them under the other one because 14th motorized actually needs to go down. You guys have eight. Yeah, okay. That was, that was dumb. So I can no longer switch them, unfortunately. Oh, wait. I haven't. In yeah, I almost completely forgot about these. Hmm. Interesting that they actually had a depot in there. But uh, if one of these things is like 20 kilometers, which I believe it is, it's like still 200 kilometers. This is insane distance still. But I believe the AI is pretty inept at dealing with this. So I, I'm just, you know, I'm going all in basically. It is. Uh, yeah, but let's uh, move the motorized core down here. Um, ooh. Really? Did I actually... Uh, come on. So you need two more, which is going to be these and Viking. All right, well, let's put, yeah, you can't. Okay, well, that sucks, but at least I widened the breach and I got Belgorod too. My hope is that these guys just move out. Hmm. So anyway, digging digging in along the Os the Stariaskal River or the Oskal River, however you want to call it, but it's Stariaskal. Um, all right, Stariaskal is the city, so the Oskal River would be the grand prize, I think, for 1941. Getting to the Don, I think it's fairly unrealistic to to do at this moment. I feel. All right, so I was talking about how 
I also at least need some units there. Uh, we'll move the Romanian cavalry up in here. And they can already cross, so. Alright, the bulk of the forces is still. Of the Romanian forces still moving up. They'll have a, a hard time catching up to the Germans, anyhow, but. There's no real use for that. Alright, let's uh, continue. So, moving up, you guys are looking somewhat solid although I actually feel moving out of here is probably a better better ordeal like they're in a very a bad spot there um, that's just no good so same actually for this spot I will move you out split you up double duty here single duty here but you know you cannot go there um, I don't want to give up on Morzhaisk mm, I'll hold my positions like this for now it's fairly weak but hopefully it will do the trick. Shouldn't forget about these. First core can go here for reserve duty. I don't know why these real construction units are there. That's a very strange location to be. Let's take a look whether there are some units that got unfrozen. Not here, not there. Alright, that's looking good. And then there's only the OKL. No German reinforcements. This is so far back in... Yeah, okay. Uh, technically, we're not even completely out of the marshes here. They actually extend all the way up till pretty much Chernikov, which we still haven't taken. Um, okay, so... Core... Certainly move up care of the rail units indeed this is taken care of let's put third motorized in reserve eighth panzer in refit while we're at it I would very much like to okay wait. I'm gonna split you up as well here. Get one part in here and actually keep the other parts in reserve. So at least we'll have some units that can act as a reserve of 20th Panzer while these guys are now somewhat uh, more sturdy. Another option is to distribute them here and here but I'm afraid that they're gonna attack 14th Motorized and I'm not too sure whether I'm gonna like that. Um, yeah, so. There we are. Some parts going somewhat well, other parts slightly less so. But this is definitely the you know, biggest challenge here. Getting all the way there. Let's do AI depot management. Mm. 
Then let's ship it back. Uh, yeah, the best depots I can do is something like this indeed. At least they have one here, but then this one doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, this is still uh, tricky too. At least we have one going up all the way to Borodino for now, and uh, that should help with the supplies a little bit here. I'm quite sure they can get probably all the way up here. So by taking Torjok, we actually should be able to get a pretty decent depot also for Kalinin. They shouldn't be supply starved. Because I would imagine that uh, historically, what the Germans would have to do, they actually took Kalinin even before taking this. So they had to pretty much just use the rail to Zubtsov and then get them by truck. Which is probably not to have been to their liking. Alright. At least um, the one positive thing about this here is that we are no longer air transporting supplies over up near Leningrad where the Germans can or where the Russians can shoot my supply transports down super quickly. That was uh, a bit of a di failure and disaster. Hey, wait a minute. Mm, there's no mud here now. Huh. Okay, so Russians have supplies first and then they do stuff. Where is... Yeah, okay. So that means that at the start of the turn, any units that are then cut off will not be able to actively go and attack and things like that. I can only imagine these logistics uh, will take longer and longer. One thing that's pretty funny is that, yeah, on the map down here, it, it looks kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. And then probably the guys in here, they'll either just teleport out. They even still just have a working rail line, sadly enough. The thing though is that I actually need to capture this hex. I mean, the enemy can teleport however they feel like. a lot of losses again. So when they decide to go and bomb, I think they went for like Durovo. Sometimes they go for, I believe they try to go for my uh, supply depots and I think generally that that nets me uh, a lot of hits, but then they do take down my depots, I believe. I think that's kind of the way it works. They act as if they had no units at Tsukinishki, but I don't think that was actually the case. <laughs> yeah, they can just easily go out. These guys still have all their movements. Because they have a supply dump. Huh. On the airfield, huh? yeah, that's... Reaction attacks are the worst because it means that they're... They didn't do anything. Okay, so 
it means that they didn't feel good enough to do reaction attacks. Um, they're, I guess, generally the worst. Mm, they did get some units out, for sure, already. Mm, you're gonna attack me in heavy woods, that's... They claim they're gonna conveniently take all of this, and I think that makes a whole lot of sense. I have to see because again it I don't see a whole lot of enemy units here that's generally the problem these airfields are not doing super well the thing is that in the south now there are actually some parts which actually have good weather which is At least that's how it looks like. But we'll have to go through five minutes of resource movement first, though. Uh, either way, we'll be able to take Niladovo unless they kept a unit out there, which is very unlikely. And then we'll have the Veliki Luki Rushev rail line uh, at least complete in the sense that we can start converting the rail line. I really need a, a second. Uh, Rail unit in the south, though. That's why it's especially bad that I lost that uh, Romanian rail conversion unit. Just shocked that uh, it actually it didn't route or anything; just disappeared. But I did actually don't know what they had that in uh, the first game as well because in the first game I don't actually remember. Uh, well, I did play part of the 1941 campaign, but I did on an ultimate difficulty. That was just overall not uh, not a success. Uh, yeah, I did an impossible. Why are you down here? Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that, that was just overall not a not a very big success. Giving up these two axes for free. Oh, they're actually holding a P now. Uh, hmm. Seems like they're giving up a whole chunk of territory there. As well, just like here, as if we can just march into... Poltava. Uh, well, like I said, the enemy is just kind of reacting strangely to all of this, but uh, look, I, I'll take any spoils I can get for free. Thing is, though, I actually don't don't want to run any more air operations except for in the south where I, I definitely want to do that that naval I uh, actually don't want to run ground support and actually 
actually don't really need a naval patrol around Parnu. Don't need a recon there. Let's do it like this. Also because I actually just straight up don't need a recon in the north that much right now. Why are you still running recon in the north? I just took it off. They just completely did not listen to the directives that I gave. I mean, I know I, I put on AI, but... Okay. So removing them from that sheet does not work. No, they, they did the same stuff even though I, I removed it. And anyway, let's take a look. We have, uh, we had this first leadership. I don't think I read this. On September 27, 1941, the first Liberty ship, the SS Patrick Henry, is launched. Liberty ships were proved to be major parts of the Allied supply system. The Nexus gar we had an Nexus garrison in Eastern, in Western Europe. So we got one VP, one AP. RAF raids 941. The British RAF begins conducting bombing raids on Exit cities in July 1941, which stretch until December 1941. These early bombing missions reveal that only one in three bombers are able to hit their mark within five miles of their target. Target manfire that was ready, raids 55, raids 1. And we have these partisans again. Axis reach Sphere River. This is what I want to hear. Finnish forces take Petrozavodsk and take up defensive positions on the Sphere River. Poland's Karelia captured by the Axis. Okay, good. I guess they did not take this yet. But that's less important. Since there are no ports. And they just get a bit of Empire. This is the most important one because now they don't have this rail line anymore. Basically, the only rail that they get is this single rail. Um, no, that's not true. They actually do have a second single rail that will then converge here and they, they also get it here but uh, this the fact that they seemingly left this empty is also kind of weird I mean I'll go in there but uh, either way I, there was more news I need to toggle the news. Info screens is probably where it's at. Victory events. First Moscow conference. The first Moscow conference took place from September the 29th to October the 9th and uh, October 1st. William Everill Harriman, representing the U.S. and Lord Beaverbrook, representing the U.K., met with Joseph Stalin in Moscow. The discussions involved the promise of aid and support by the Allies to the Soviet Union in the common fight against Nazi Germany. Based on conference agreements for the period of October 1941 through June 1942, the USA and Great Britain would provide monthly deliveries to the USSR of 400 airplanes, 500 tanks, anti-aircraft and anti-tank guns, motor vehicles, aluminium and other metals. In return, the USSR promised deliveries to the Americans and British of large quantities of raw materials needed for war production. Okay, um, well, as usual, I do like to do the simple stuff first. It seems like they almost completely just abandoned all of this. Uh, which means that I'm just, in this case, using these units. to grab uh, territory and move over in this direction. And I can use the cavalry as well.
to start moving a little bit further. Now, it does seem like they likely have a defense here, and they left a few units. Um, now, I don't think that should be much of a bother. So, uh, the one thing, I mean, they took this, so it's going to be harder for me to get the supplies going here, which is very annoying on one hand. All right, well, uh, let's just move you here. So we know at least that this is cut off. It does count for something. I mean, even though I'm delayed by rail for a little bit, at least I do get to snag these. Um, so that is something. Uh, well, let's see if I can take Kirch. Yes, I can. And there was a few battalions. I cannot cross, which is unsurprising. I did say I want to go and take Yalta by cavalry. That will take a while, but it doesn't matter. Sevastopol is now isolated. But uh, I will have to send more artillery in there. Okay, so we got the Crimea. I'll take these last hexes with another calf. That's fine. No need to worry about those. All right. And there are a... There are very few things. There's still unit in Poltava. Okay, fair enough. I'm leaving behind a, a few hexes, but those really shouldn't be that much of a bother. Let's retake Preluki. Oh, that's not actually where I wanted to go. Huh. Seems like they did abandon these here regions. So At least get right next to Chernikov. Hmm. Yeah, they, they they were just teleporting out there again. This teleporting is the absolute worst, <laughs> and that I do declare. Um, okay, so like I did say, I didn't capture as much this time, but I still got a, a little bit more of the rail line. And uh, yeah, that's that's enough for me. Let's work a bit on this rail. I'm pretty much done for this episode, but uh, as I said before, doing some of the easier stuff first. Yeah, it's kind of relaxing. Uh, 
We don't have to worry about serious Soviet attacks just yet. And things of that nature. They actually got all the way to Novgorod, so that's sweet. One other thing that I could do, technically, is move back through here. That makes it a lot faster than also going through there. Hmm. But I actually, nah, let, let's just work our way around. Get rid of this. All right. Um, more super easy stuff. I don't think there really is that much. So, uh, Mm. Let's move these tanks forward as well. Hmm. Basically, this is the distance that I still need to cover for this year. Getting up to Rostov. Potentially also getting the rest here. That would be the absolute best. But... I guess beggars can't be choosers. I might actually be better off just clearing these guys out entirely given how problematic it is, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll think about it for a while. At any rate. The fact that I'm not taking this suggests that they have a unit somewhere here as well. So they do decide they did decide to keep some presence over in this area. Uh, which is interesting. Uh oh. Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to end the video here. I want to thank you for watching. Do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, take care. See you then. Bye-bye.